Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. There's only two kind of black people in America today. You either running free or you running scared. How you running? <laughs> this morning's briefing is basically going to be something of a bookend to last night's Sunday address. Now, the reason that I decided to start off with that quote from Paul Mooney is for two reasons, the first of which being obviously taking a dig at the tethers. You got foundational black Americans running free and the tethers just running scared, or rather just running in general. They seem to be very fond of running. In fact, that seems to be their favorite thing in the world. But there's another reason I decide to start this morning's briefing off with a quote from Paul Mooney. Essence Fest takes place in New Orleans. And that being the case, I thought it only poetic justice to start off with a quote from a Louisiana native like Paul Mooney. Now, I gotta give a salute to Brother Tariq for helping to bring awareness to the fact that Caroline Wenge admitted that her family had been instrumental and collaborators in the East African slave trade. That's important because Dr. John Henry Clark said that all history is a current event. Everything that has ever happened continues to happen. He meant that literally. That's what this putrid episode is. It's a living reminder of what Dr. Clark said. The collaborators and the accomplices with the slave trade are still doing the same thing today. It's still going on right now. Hundreds of years has not stopped this process. The individuals who were undermining black people hundreds of years ago, they still have their progeny doing the exact same thing today. And this Wanga woman, she had the nerve to call New Orleans Essence's forever home. I guess she figured to herself that she was claiming New Orleans in the name of the Tethers. But what it turned out to be was a bad case of counting your butter biscuits before they're baked. New Orleans is Essence's forever home. Get real. The instant that Essence was bought by a tether and then infested with slavery collaborators, opportunists, and professional BS artists, New Orleans wasn't their home. Liberia, Nigeria, Kenya, that's Essence's home now. But the arrogance and foolishness shows how comfortable we've allowed these tethers to become. They've been getting away with cosplaying as us for the last 50 plus years. And as they see it, they can just talk as if they are us. And keep in mind, 50 years ago, that means around the time of Africa's so-called independence from colonialism, that's when we started having all of these tethers showing up. And instead of fighting to stand Africa back on its feet, instead they showed the world why Africa got knocked down in the first place. This is what white power brought them in for, as temporary tools to legitimize the lie that racism was in the past. All that stuff that those FBAs have been saying about segregation and racism and entrenched bigotry, well, that's not valid anymore, because why? Look at these sellouts who we brought in a few years ago, and they say slavery doesn't mean anything, especially because their ancestors were involved in it, and that racism is long gone and in the past, as long as Target, McDonald's, or some other white corporation gives them a token job, and it's time to move on. Now, do we actually trust someone whose family was involved in the slave trade? Do that at your own risk. Why would these tethers, as disrespectful as they are, feel like they could talk about an FBA cultural stronghold like New Orleans as if it was theirs, when they have no connection to it whatsoever, no affinity for it, they don't know anything about it? They don't know the people or the culture, and they have contempt for both. So who the hell told them that New Orleans was friendly toward tethers? Perhaps it was the homegrown bootlicks who did that, like Latoya Cantrell, the self-serving clown who calls herself New Orleans mayor. She was at the event formerly known as Essence Fest, we gotta start calling it Tether Fest now, and she was on a panel and made it into a pity party for herself. Oh, she was bemoaning how the black misleadership class has come under fire from their white supremacist pals, and they can't believe that they're getting jammed up, getting cases put on them, run out of town on a rail, disgraced, exposed. So, as usual, the out-of-touch bootlicks are tone-deaf and too stupid to read the room. It ain't about them. Of course, she's not going to call out the blatant insult of these tethers and the fiasco that they pulled at Essence Fest. In fact, she'll be singing the same song as them because they're all on White Power's payroll. Let me make a little prediction for you. Although you got most of the bootlicks, especially the political ones who are laying low right now, don't expect that to last forever. Expect to see the bootlicks come out of the woodwork eventually at some point in the future, calling themselves vouching for Caroline Wanga and Richelieu Dennis, and also expect to see the bootlicks pretending to call for unity. Why, Essence, what they were doing was not meant to be disrespectful. 
respectful. And besides, we need to see ourselves as basically being a global people. We're all from Africa when you think about it, and that's what's important. We don't need to be divisive. They'll be dragging out the faux pan-African unity chatter. Well, I don't want to unify with someone whose family was a bunch of slavery collaborators and whose descendants have been doing the most to undermine us in our own land. It's all a finesse. It's all a hustle for these guys. Caroline Wanga has been trying to be a diversity consultant for the last several years, and she had been with Target and McDonald's, and she knows what it is that they want. Her job is to get in front of the camera and be the token tether who will put on her buck tooth grin and claim that whoever her white corporate employer is at the moment is dedicated to diversity and opportunity and whatever other empty, meaningless buzzwords she can think of. That's her job, to be their crash dummy. That's what the whole DEI coordinator thing is about. Whenever you hear somebody claim that that's what they are, that's what their real job was. The pressure of the BLM protest also brought a lot of self-interested opportunists out of the woodwork. White power knew that it would need some shills to hide behind while they falsely claimed that they were going to do better. But these bootlicks who get on the payroll, they know it's all fake. All right, now let's get something else straight. I can tell some of you like your parties and festivals and conventions perhaps a little bit too much because when I talked about Essence Fest, some of you acted like it was the end all and be all. While Essence being captured by tethers was certainly not a good thing, the reality is in an overall sense, we didn't lose anything integral to us. It wasn't a good thing, but it ain't the end of the world either. There's absolutely nothing that's been quote unquote lost with Essence Fest that we are not more than capable of making up for, recreating, and doing even better. The problem here is not so much about who owns the brand of Essence. The problem happens to be forwarding our own lineage-based brand to make sure that the names get out there so that people recognize not to even go to these tether-based organizations and events. Stop it before it even starts. People are already starting to understand the importance of lineage, and we have to keep re-educating them about it because that's what you have to do with every group. Every generation has to be retaught the principles that empower them and the ones that endanger them. Every generation has to be taught that lesson, and it has to be taught to them vigorously. So what's called for here is not mourning the loss of Essence Fest. What's called for here is learning why it fell in the first place, and also making sure that these mistakes are not repeated in the future. Lineage does matter. But if we don't act like it does, if we don't make it a hallmark of the events and the functions and the traditions that we give rise to, then what it means is lineage becomes an empty word because we have failed to treat it with the proper meaning that it deserves. That's why it's important to make sure that it starts being mentioned in the things that we do and the things that we create. It's time to start doing some gatekeeping, but you can't have a gate unless people can actually see it. That way they all understand that somebody is asserting their sovereignty in this place. Somebody is asserting authority and legitimacy. This is not about one festival or event. Essence was a noteworthy magazine, and the Essence Fest was a good thing to have, but it's not the end of the world. Though it does have value in that people will remember this, this was the event where the tethers showed the world exactly what they've been planning to do from the very beginning. And in that sense, a very real sense, what's happened here is actually very useful. It validates and confirms for everyone what we've been saying all along. We can be disgusted with what's happened with Essence, but the reality is as soon as those guys were acquired by Time, Inc., that was the end of the story right there. That was the chapter closed. Over here in the black media, we wrote off Essence a long time ago. It was blatantly obvious exactly what they had become. But we also have to understand that not everybody gets their news and views from us, so don't be too frustrated when you have people who go to things like Essence Fest regardless, as if they didn't know any better, because for a lot of them, they don't. But they're getting an education today, aren't they? They're finding out exactly how rotten Essence has become, and they're finding out who's responsible for it. Essence as a publication and a cultural festival was only important to us to the extent that it honored and magnified us. See, that's something else that Dr. John Henry Clark talked about. He said that whatever it is that you're a part of, be it a political party or even a whisk club, either it's supposed to be a tool of your empowerment or you leave it in the dustbin of history. And the same thing goes for Essence or anything else that we're a part of. When it no longer serves our purpose, you're supposed to walk away. Everyone else does that. You let some foundational black American call themselves buying some non-black publication, or even an African one, and trying to hijack it in order to boost us? 
that would be the very last time that anyone from those other groups even looks in that direction. Everybody loves to get on code. They love to be disciplined so long as it's against us. Look, we got to be honest with ourselves. A lot of black folks have been conditioned to or otherwise grown into the bad habits of putting money into the hands of people who have contempt for us. Now, when you have people who've been doing that for a while, they're not going to quit that bad habit cold turkey. But by consistently getting the message out there, people are going to hear it, and eventually they are going to start to get their minds right. At least a critical mass of them will. It's not going to happen overnight, but it will happen. Just look at the overwhelming backlash to the festival formerly known as Essence Fest. What the tethers in charge of Essence are counting on is our group returning to its old bad habits, like the black women who decided that they were going to still patronize that Asian hair salon owner even after he punched that black woman in front of her grandchild. And then you had fools going right back there afterwards because they had a sale on Yaki Weave, I suppose. They're counting on that kind of foolish behavior because black people have shown them that kind of thing too many times. That our memories are too short. Or that we'll overlook some egregious wrongdoing against us so long as there's some free swag in it for us, I guess. Expect the tethers to dig in their heels and calculate that black people will come back to Essence Fest next year if they just go ahead and make a lot of a noise announcing that they're going to be having hair care products next year and this time around there'll be more free giveaways of yakky weave and makeup or whatever and they'll make sure that there's some free food this time around oh and be sure to put out the word that okay we're not going to be trying to upsell them on any fees or plenty stuff like that next year now in 2027 will be different but next year we're going to try to go ahead and lure them back in that's what their betting is going to happen Tether Fest has been dirtied up to the point that the white media and its bootlicks have been trying to damage control, and they've been forced to have to mention that this is a lineage-based controversy here. Tethers are being recognized as having a bad rep, so Caroline Wanga can claim that New Orleans is the home of essence all she wants, but now that they've been exposed, she probably shouldn't expect a warm welcome anymore. Because while the Tethers have been betting all their chips on white power remaining in power and thinking to themselves that we basically are going to be on defense forever, that's part of the reason why it's important that we call these people out. Enough exposure, enough pressure, enough people recognizing the Tethers for what they are, and the same way that they fled from Africa, they'll also be fleeing from places like their forever home in New Orleans also. But that only happens if our people show the persistence. If our people make it clear that we're not forgetting about these wrongs next year or any other year. We do that, and no matter how tough Caroline Wanga, Richelieu Dennis, or the rest of their kiss-butt chorus in the bootlick media try to talk, they will have no choice but to do what they've always done. And that is to run. Except this time around, without the white media and their white corporate sponsors to bail them out, Tetherfest will have absolutely nowhere left to run. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Jacques Hargett, Johnny Martin, Tyrone Jones, Michael Burton, and L. Wilson. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.